tied to that discussion today of being in mission, which is possible of people of Ulul Azam, people of a strong commitment or devotion. And the Quran tells us what we have done of Shabara Ulul Azm in a Rusul, have a strong patience and commitment like those committed individuals. Those committed individuals are five of the prophets. Ulul Azm here mentions on the Quran here, and like I've mentioned directly by name, is the Prophet Nuh alayhi salam, Ibrahim, Musa, wa Isa, wa Nabiyuna Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa These are classified as the five committed individuals. And you can go back and read about the lives of these individuals in the stories of the Qasas al-Anbiya of Ibn Kathir, whereby he collects the stories of all the prophets we mentioned inside the Quran and other prophets as well, to see what was the struggle of these individuals. So the Muslim begins to look at these individuals to gain aspiration and commitment because many Muslims, as we mentioned, don't have that commitment or look at those individuals that we should not be looking up to those individuals and we begin to emulate them, we begin to copy them. So we want to look at some of those individuals that came before us or some of the challenges that came before us in parallel to the challenges that we face today because some people they think that those individuals who came before us that they were special, that's true but at the same time they faced many things that we faced but there was a resolution or commitment to overcome those problems especially young individuals and you find the problems of the youth today are similar to the problems of the youth that came before us the Quran mentions that those individuals who are seeking purity what do the people begin to say about them? Quran documents Get rid of the people of Lut from the village, from the city, from the precinct, from the country. Why? Because they want to be a purified people. Just like today that you find people calling towards goodness, towards piety, towards good conduct, good actions. You find unfortunately, not just the non-Muslims, you find Muslims who are now beginning to say, expel these individuals who want to follow a life of piety or a life of righteousness. Like what the Quran mentions in the Ladina Shibuna and Tashi and Fahisha to be Ladina Amanu, Lahum Adabun Ali Mutidunya will Akhira. Those individuals who love to spread vice, promiscuity, bad behavior inside society, for them there will be an evil punishment inside this world and likewise inside the hereafter as well. So these are the challenges that existed then, challenges which exist today that people are trying to expel the people of righteousness or people calling you need towards goodness that we find and we know that life for muslim is about control it's about controlling oneself is a test for a believer and thus you find in the book of kitab al-jannah wa ahliha in sahih muslim you have the time go back and read this chapter this compilation by sahih muslim because many times we study iman read the beginning book Kitab with Iman of Sahih Muslim if it tells us what we believe in as Muslims and that's the end of the book it begins to talk about the people of paradise and the good things that will be given to the people of paradise and that is all to spur us on to encourage us but sometimes we may mention the fearful things or the bad ending that will happen to certain individuals we need to encourage people as well about the blessings that will be given to them so if you read the book on paradise and the inhabitants of paradise and the, the bliss, the good things that will be given to the people of paradise. Find a famous in the hadith when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created paradise and Jibreel went to see paradise. He said, Whoever sees paradise will want to enter straight into paradise. Whoever sees Jahannam, the punishment, etc., want to stay away from it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Cover up paradise with makarih. In other wordings that we find, surround paradise with obstacles and surround the hellfire with temptations. As you find the Ulama mentioned, there are two diseases in the, upon the earth at the moment. One is shubuhat, one is doubts, and one's aqaid, one's belief, and the other one is shahwat, desires. Every path of shubha, of doubt, takes you away from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and your creed. 
every path of shahwa takes you away in terms of action away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala these are the two diseases which exist to this day amongst the Muslims which are destroying the Muslims taking them away from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so the path of paradise is surrounded with obstacles and the path of Jahannam is surrounded by temptations, by desires where it falls into desires begins to follow that eventually begins to travel the path towards Jahannam Imam Muslim explained this hadith centuries ago the most famous explanation of Sahih Muslim that we find written some 18, 19 volumes he mentions there are four obstacles Al-Makarih, what are the difficulties that we have to overcome the obstacles which we have to overcome to enter into paradise the first difficulty he mentions is Al-Ijtihad fil ibadat to strive and struggle in your worship, in your ibadat so many Muslims when we talk about lofty goals, talking about this, talking about that but you know sometimes it's not rocket science the answer is quite simple how many Muslims pray five times a day? it's quite simple so Al-Ijtihad fil ibadat is the path of success person as the Quran mentions حافروا على الصلوات والصلاة الوسطى وقوموا لله قانتين preserve and guard your prayers and especially the middle prayer and stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in devotion, in commitment the beginning of Surah Al-Mu'minun the 23rd chapter of the Quran قَدْ أَفْلَحِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ successful are the believers and the characteristics are given of the believers 11-12 characteristics the first characteristic that you find are those individuals are submissive, focusing inside their prayers. Like another surah that we find, those are the believers who are upon their prayers, always worried about their prayers. So that's the beginning of the Muslim. The first thing the Muslim will be asked about in the day of judgment will be one's prayers. So that's al ijtihad fil ibadat, especially living in the West, that we all find the challenges of living here of work commitments, of family commitments, the wider world around us, studies, whatever it may be, person has to do what? Your faith is going to be tested. It's not like a Muslim country where Adhan goes, everything comes to a standstill. Quran tells us, Inna salata kanat ala al-mu'minina kitab al-mawquta. Indeed, prayer has been prescribed for believers at set times. After such a long time, you find still people always come and ask the same question. What should I do if I'm at work and I can't pray? Should I pray in, 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 in the boot of my car? Should I pray behind the dustbin? Should I pray there? Can I hide and read my prayers? These are questions still to this day. People ask me exactly the same questions. The foundation hasn't been laid. Every Muslim should know that full stop. The only time qada or salah is allowed, if a person has been trapped, the person has been blocked in some serious manner, they have lost their senses, lost their mind, totally forgotten. As for what we find on a daily basis, unfortunately, trivial, trivial, any uh, questions are presented you know I have to catch the bus or should I go into the mosque and read my salah you know can't you catch another bus or well, I'm going to get home late that shows da'af of iman shows weakness of iman because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to ask us did we catch the bus on time the most beloved thing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ayyul amal ahabbu illallah subhanahu wa ta'ala which action is most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as salatu ala waqtiha prayer on its set time or its beginning time or the best time that's the best thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows from the believers so some of us we are worried about so many different things I'm not saying we shouldn't be worried about the plight of the Muslim Ummah the difficulties that we're facing whatever it may be but this is the beginning this is the foundation because from my experience I find so many individuals you know they can't be literally bothered to come for Salat al-Fajr to the Masjid some people live a block or two blocks away they can't be bothered they, you know, they get too into technical discussion, fiqhi debates is it really a masjid, I don't hear the adhan, should I really go? but the ajr is there 25 times to 27 times more بَشِّرُوا مَشِينَ بِاللَّيْلِ give glad tidings of individuals who are walking in the darkness what is it referring to? Salat al-Fajr, Salat al-Isha those individuals who visit the masjid frequently فَشْهَدْ لَهُمُ iman testify these individuals have iman who are walking to and fro from the masjid the most difficult prayer for the munafiqun is what? Salat al-Fajr and Salat al-Isha. If you knew the reward of it, you would come crawling like a baby. We all know these ahadith, we all know it. But yet in practical terms, how many people do we find for Salat al-Fajr that are there? For making that effort. 
So this is the first obstacle we need to overcome, is that ijtihad, is ibadat, striving in our obligation, likewise the rest of the obligations. For us in the month of Ramadan, once again, we know the days are going to get lengthy, it's going to be a long day, people, once again, going to ask the same question, I've got to work the next day, you know, can I break my fast, can I really fast? These excuses. You know, I'm sure today all of us are given overtime, most of us have jumped to overtime, isn't it? It's overtime, that's what it is, Ramadan's overtime, it's going to go slightly a few more hours, or you can plan ahead, the sensible Muslim is one who plan ahead to take their holidays and take something time out to be able to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Likewise, one performance of Hajj, giving of Zakat, all these pillars, these are the main pillars of Islam that a Muslim needs to develop inside their life. That's when an individual came to the Prophet Muhammad and asked him a question. And he said, and the Rajulan, and he jailed the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi asked him, and he, Akhbirni, or Aita Yani, see or inform me any law and any salatal muktuba was soon to Ramadan. What led to the halal, what haram to the haram? Well, I'm as it and a delicate shape and at whole gender call a naam. This person asked a simple question. Are I to any akhbir me if you see inform me if I pray the five daily prayers and I fast the month of Ramadan. I believe something is halal. And I carry it out. Just not believe something is halal. You try to do with that, that which is halal. I believe something is haram. muharramat, And you try to stay away from the haram. Walam azid ala dhalika shay'a. I'm not going to come with anything more than that. I'm just going to stick to the fara'id. Will I enter into paradise? The Prophet Muhammad said, right? In the affirmative, na'am. Bi ma'na, na'am tadkhul jannah. You will enter into paradise. These words are jawami or telling you, small words but a deep meaning. We really ponder over this. If today us Muslims can do this, we'd be successful inshallah. Other riwayat that you find, whoever wants to see a person of paradise, then look at this man walking around. And the other wording you find, if he remains truthful, he will be successful. Meaning if he perseveres, holds fast to this, this individual will be a successful individual. The second thing that Imam Nawi highlighted, the obstacle that we need to be heard and we need to overcome to enter the paradise, he mentioned qadmul ghayf, to swallow one's anger. Some of us could be, be inshallah, good Muslims, we pray, we fast, we do all the rituals of a Muslim, but we can't control our anger. It's common practice today, people over trivial things, and sometimes when you mix with the Muslim world and you mix with this world here, you find differences like the heavens and the earth. You know, in the Muslim world, if you unite somebody, nobody gets angry. If you walk in front of someone, no one gets angry. If you look at someone wrong, no one gets angry. In this world, it's totally even you find people practicing Islam, get frustrated, abusive language, etc. that you find cannot control their anger. So Sifat al Mu'minin, the believers, are those individuals who swallow their anger. The third obstacle that we find is al afu to pardon, to be graceful, to pardon mankind. Somebody oppresses you, someone says something to you, you just pardon them, no problem. Lillahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the Quran mentions the Muttaqun, the pious individuals, are those who are racing to do good deeds. And they're spending their wealth. الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ فِي السَّرَّاءِ Who spend their wealth at times when they have the wealth, they don't have the wealth. وَالْكَاظِمِينَ الْغَيْثِ وَالْعَفِينَ عَنِ النَّاسِ وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ They swallow their anger and they forgive mankind and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the doers of good. So that's the third obstacle. A person should learn to forgive and pardon people. The fourth thing that he mentioned centuries ago, Imam Nawi mentioned, is a sabr and a shahawat. A person has patience to stay away from temptations. Tasawwur wuhada, this is mentioned centuries ago, that he's mentioning stay away from temptations. When to enter the paradise, you need to avoid the temptations. And we know that shahawat, the desire for man, the gharisa that you find, the level of testosterone, the temptation within a man, are different from a woman. You know, they write about the biological level of test from it's different from a man to a woman. But look at what the Prophet Muhammad highlighted centuries ago. That it does become a mission which is possible. We highlighted swimming, running, wrestling, any form of combat sport, using a sword, a spear, an arrow. If you really study all of these sciences, what is it? Some form of combat. Any physical work will break your desires will break your temptations. Mentioned centuries ago, you know, today what do we find uh, most Muslim young men, what are they doing, playing, what is it? Uh, Black Ops or was it MW3? 
That's jihad for them now, isn't it? Eh? It's controlling it, isn't it? <laughs> That's what it's become. But the real physical, I'm not saying we should go and create rampage and do something wrong, that's not what we're trying to highlight. Obesity in a hadith inside Sahih Bukhari will become rampant in this Muslim Ummah. And you'll find fatness will begin to appear. It's one of the minor signs of day of judgment. So the Muslim is one that knows what to do to counteract the problems that they face. The nafs, the soul, all of us have those desires. That's what the Quran mentions. In the nafs, the amaratun bisu, in the marahim rabbi. Indeed, the soul. It calls, it yearns towards any temptation, towards desires, except for the soul which has the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon it. <coughs> this ayah is placed where inside Surah Yusuf. The whole of Surah Yusuf is a lesson in case about Yusuf alayhi salam who had been given Shatrul Jamal. Half of beauty was given to him. And now he was placed in that environment, a temptuous environment. But what did he do? He had patience. He feared Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> Whoever in he has patience fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never let the iman of the doers of good go to waste. And likewise, you find that the beginning of Surah Yusuf is also a very important point because many young Muslims they know what's halal, what's haram better than us. They know what's halal, what's haram. But many Muslims they think, I'm going to do my haram, and then when I get to a later stage inside my life, then I'll repent and I'll become a good individual or whatever it may be. What does the Quran mention about this? The brothers of Yusuf decided to kill him or then throw him into the well. They said, after we do this wicked action, After this, we're going to become righteous people. What's the logic of this verse? It's teaching us that they're going to repent afterwards. The same people, many Muslims today, they think, I'll do haram and then later on, I'll repent in my life. But you know, for some of us, later on may never ever come person may never be given the opportunity to repent or to rectify themselves. So one should be wary about that, of having a form of deception at one's heart, a later stage I'll repent back to in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Likewise we find in the, in the hadith that we find an uqba marfu'an, we mentioned this hadith, inna rabbaka la ya'jabu li shabi la sabbatan lahu. Indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises a young boy la sabbatan lahu bima'na la yamilu ila lihawa. A person who doesn't go towards any temptations. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises this young person. Imam al manawi a famous in muhaddith that we find, he mentions, to explain this hadith, فَإِنَّ هَذَا نَاذِرٌ This is very, very rare, because most young people are going towards temptations. So that individual who controls oneself, who doesn't go towards temptations, is praising <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this person is not doing what every individual is doing. And that should be the norm of every single Muslim. Over here, what do we find today? It's common practice that people should be indulging inside haram actions, fornication, adultery, shud al khamar, the drinking of alcohol, the taking of drugs, uh, whatever it may be. It's common practice now. Before, when many of us were growing up, it was very, very rare. Very rarely would you hear that someone do this haram action and everyone normally looked down upon them. Today, it's become the opposite. That most people are doing these actions and the person who doesn't do it, they find that person is being weird. That person is being strange. Or the common path, the pattern, unfortunately, even though it's still Alhamdulillah is a good sign, that many young Muslims are doing haram and then becoming good Muslims. Still that's good, but that shouldn't be the foundation. The asal, the foundation of a Muslim should be, a Muslim should never be doing haram. It should be nadir. It should be very rare a Muslim does something haram. The asas, the foundation of Muslim, is always sticking to the halal, from the natural people. And if a person does begin to go away, then we remind them, we encourage them to come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then a discussion begins to take place amongst the ulama about this, whether the person done the sin later on or before, are they better, or they raise their rank, whatever it may be. But the ulama conclude a person, a young Muslim, who never ever indulged in haram, their rank is better than a person who may have sinned and then repented. And they go to that view that a person stayed away from any, any for, uh, entertainment or going into any form of haram. Obviously, you may be thinking, you know what, that's very, very difficult. But you know what, the reward is immense. That you find a famous hadith, Seven types of individuals will be under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when there will be no shade. Imamun adilun, a just imam. Then secondly, straight after that is mentioned, وَشَابٌ نَشَأَ فِي عِبَادَةِ اللَّهِ subhanahu wa ta'ala. A young person grew up worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The hadith doesn't mention an elderly man, 
or an old person, it mentions a young person. It goes through the category, it talks about the individual who loves the masjid, loves their brother only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then another category it mentions a man who's tempted by a beautiful woman of limit, of prestige, of honor. And what does that person say? Inni Allah. Likewise, this hadith can be flipped around as well. Woman could be tempted, or a woman who remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all there. If you study these seven categories, or Lama mentioned one of Shaykh, he got two whole volumes, 300 pages each, explaining this one hadith. He mentioned that what is the key element that all these seven individuals that they share? Because it just Imam, why is it praising an Imam? Why is it praising a young child, a young boy, a young woman? Why is it praising someone who's giving their wealth? Because all these individuals, Ishtarakuhum fi tarki hawahum. All of them share the key element, they all broke their desires. That's what these seven categories they share. The just Imam, because a person who's in authority, in leadership, don't sound too political, you can see what's happening in the world at the moment, is no one can question the Imam. You know, if uh, Imam, meaning whoever the leader may be, if uh, you may have heard the, the story of the emperor who wore no clothes, isn't it? If you come out and say you're not wearing no clothes, you get executed. If you say you are wearing clothes, you say, now you're lying that I'm not wearing no clothes, you still get executed. So no matter what you say, you get executed. So that's unfortunately our situation in, in, at the moment. So here is praising the just Imam, meaning that the Imam can do whatever he wants to do, <coughs> but he breaks his desires. You know, being in the position of Ra'iya position, don't belittle this. For some people, it's more important than wealth. It's more important being in that position of authority. You can see in the world at the moment, it has a big you know, conscious element within the person. They will not give that up quite easily. So this person breaks their desire by listening to the people and doing whatever the people want done to help the people. <coughs> like as a young individual, he's surrounded by temptation, the person breaks those temptations to follow, to become a better individual. The person who's spending their wealth is breaking their desires. Every individual loves wealth, the piling of wealth, immense love towards wealth. The Quran mentions them to know the you're never going to attain five things if you don't spend on the things that you love. If you read the tafsir of, the, of, of, this, of this verse, and inside Surah Al Imran, not mistaken, the beginning of the fourth juz, you find here Abu Talha had a garden. When he heard this ayah, he gave it away in charity. He gave it away. Because this is the thing that I love the most. So, breaking their desires once again. Like by the person who has a love for the masjid. People like to walk about in the marketplace, and, you know, what you find, you know, was it Westfield now, we don't know, what name. you go to Westfield and Fields and then, what's that area in West London, now you go Westfield here, isn't it? So people, you know, breaking your desires to remain where? In the masjid. So all these individuals have broken their desires to come close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Likewise, why Imam uh, Ibn Ab Abdul Bak, Spanish scholar, he mentions, this is the best hadith on fada'il, the best hadith about virtues, about doing good actions, this is the best hadith. Because many times people read different hadith or different books and find talking about fada'il, about virtues, and many of these other books that we find have weaknesses inside them. The best book is a side point of fada'il, of virtues, is Riyadh al-Salihin. Every masjid and every Muslim should keep that inside their house and read Riyadh al-Salihin. In general, in the 80 to 90 percent ahadith, there's no problem with the ahadith inside, either printed in two volumes or one volume. If everything about the seal of the Prophet, in front of his patience, his, his anger, his dress sense, his eating, his drinking. Everything's been documented about sabr, about taqwa, about khawf. Everything's been documented inside this. Every Muslim should go back and read the other side of him to see the, the fadah and the virtues of the good actions that we should be doing in inside and in our lives. Likewise, we find that on the day of judgment, or before that, so we find this hadith also, some of the ulama mentioned, it completes the whole Muslim society.